If you haven't been to Union Station to catch the Da Vinci exhibit, well, your time's ticking down. It only runs through May 1st. Lots of drawings and models that attest to his genius, but you know the real life Leonardo has been fictionalized in a new book by Stephanie Story. It's called Oil and Marble, and in it, the St. Louis native imagines how two of the world's greatest artists might have shared the stage. I was walking through Florence with my husband in 2006. And I told him the story. The two most iconic works in all of Western history were created in the same town at the same time by two artists who hated each other. Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo were rivals. They really did live in Florence at the same time, during the same years, and they hated each other. And while they were living in that city, same town, same time, Leonardo was painting the Mona Lisa in oil, while Michelangelo was carving the David in marble. And he said, why does anybody know that? I don't know that, I'm a smart guy. And I don't realize they lived at the same time. Why don't you write that as a movie? Because at the time I was writing more screenplays. And so I went home and I started breaking the story. And even though I had been a fiction writer my whole life, it still frightened me to conquer this as a novel. But I set out to do that five years ago. The source of their rivalry was professional jealousy. They were also personality-wise at odds. Leonardo was handsome, popular, charming. At the time that they met, he was 50 years old, already at the pinnacle of his career. Michelangelo, on the other hand, was a loner, temperamental, socially awkward. And at the time when they met, Michelangelo was 25 years old, not terribly well known yet. There's, in the actual historical record, there's a little bit of squishiness around how Michelangelo received the David Commission. People think that some other artists were competing for it, and Michelangelo was selected somehow, even though he was a lesser known artist. And there's a lot of speculation that Leonardo was up for the commission. Now, in my historical novel, Oil and Marble, I, of course, play that up and say Leonardo and Michelangelo went head to head for this competition, and Michelangelo won. There is a raw emotional power to Michelangelo that captivated me and I think made me understand something about the human struggle and the human spirit. When I look at the David, I see a guy facing down his opponent. I see a guy really in the middle of turmoil about to walk out into battle. And it gives me hope that maybe I can go conquer my own Goliaths or like Michelangelo did, maybe I can conquer a really botched block of stone to create a masterpiece. Leonardo da Vinci. I had a very hard time with Leonardo writing this book because I wanted to tell both sides of the story. The chapters bounce back and forth between Michelangelo and Leonardo. Michelangelo, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Leonardo. And I knew I needed to fall in love with Leonardo too, even though Michelangelo had lived in my head as a hero my entire life. So therefore, Leonardo was of course always the villain. So I had to work to find him and to fall in love with him. And I did that by spending an inordinate amount of time in his notebooks and studying his paintings, and really reading the things that he wrote and trying to get into his head. One of the things I love about Leonardo da Vinci is how his brain works, how he studied optics and biology, music and art, and combined them all to come up with these crazy inventions with scuba gear, tanks, multi-barreled cannons, so many flying machines. The man was really obsessed with flying. Early helicopters and gliders and airplanes. Hundreds of years before any of these things were invented. Uh, but I, I, I really finally found Leonardo da Vinci when I started seeing him through the eyes of Lisa Garadini del Giacondo, AKA the Mona Lisa. And I still think if I had to have dinner with one of them, <laughs> Uh, Michelangelo is socially awkward. He doesn't like to talk to people. He's very temperamental. He tends to walk out on even popes. He might walk out on me. He doesn't bathe. Uh, Leonardo, on the other hand, wears perfume and likes to tell jokes and entertain people and tell great stories. And if I'm gonna have a conversation with one of them, I think I wanna have the conversation with Leonardo because his brain is brilliant, brilliant. There's a Leonardo da Vinci exhibit going on right now in Union Station. This exhibit does one of the best jobs I've ever seen of bringing Leonardo da Vinci to life as a human being. 
that it explores all of his thoughts, all of his heart, all of his art. It encapsulates him as a person. And I think too often times other exhibits and other places leave him as a legend, leave him flattened out just as an artist or just as an engineer. And I think this exhibit does a really good job of bringing him to life as a person.